seen the horses that I work with every day do well on the course. If you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. Great people and great horses. The thrill, the camaraderie between all the people involved. Seeing the improvement, like the relationship that you build with them. You're doing something that's really important. My name is Kim Bailey. I train here at Thorndale Farm, just outside Cheltenham, five miles south of Cheltenham, in deepest Gloucestershire, um, a fantastic part of the world to be in. We came here um, in 2006 with only 20 horses. Um, it's been a long, it's been a long old struggle, really. But uh, if you were here, as I say, seven or eight years ago to do a, a staff video then, um, and we certainly didn't have that many horses. Um, the top barn was only half full. Since then, we've doubled the string, um, and we've got a capacity of 70 horses. And I don't wish to get any bigger than that. You know, you're as good as the people you employ. The staff that work for you are the most important people in the yard. Obviously owners are very important as well because without them we would be completely stuck but uh, horses, owners um, and staff are in that order are, are really very important. goes off at 20 to 5 but I'm normally out of bed about 10 to just get up brush my teeth get changed and um, I'm normally on the yard by about 10 past it's like quarter past and just come and start mucking out my first box so this is the Bournemouth cave we come in in the morning around 5 and we all look after five horses he's one of my favorites though he's gorgeous <laughs> They all get fed, they start at six, so our assistant trainer Matt and our head last Kate will come around and feed them at six. Everyone knows what they do, they all have their own set horses to look after. Well, quite a few of us will go in for some breakfast first before we ride and they'll come and we'll sweep, sweep a barn or <coughs> do like the little jobs we have and then we'll go and tackle up our first lot and normally pull out for about quarter past seven. There's a board in the uh, tack room with water riding in the morning. So we finish mucking out, we can just go straight there. I'm Matt Nichols, I'm Kim's assistant, and I'm sort of responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the yard. So all the grooms come into the tack room on the morning, uh, sort of quarter to seven, um, have a bit of a giggle and a gossip about what happened the night before. So this is the riding out list. Um, each individual member of staff has their name on the left. And then every horse had its own name tag. This is first lot, second lot, third lot, fourth lot. Typically we'd have three and a half lots. So everybody would have three lots and then half the people would be on the yard and half the people would be riding out third lot. And I shall pair them all up and, and uh, try and find suitable riders for each one. It's seven o'clock now and we pull out at 7.15 so I'm just going to tack up. to the arena, um, do a few laps of walk and Matt will just discuss with everyone what we're gonna what we're gonna do. Um, and then we'll do some trotting to warm up and then we'll head off out to the gallop and Matt and Kim will meet us up there. Our first lot pulls out at 7.15 and as uh, long as their horses are mucked out and they are on their horses and have collected into our collecting area by 7.15, I'm not a huge panicker on what time they start. Gone are the days when I used to stand by the gate at 6 o'clock and get very irated if they turned up at 5 past 6. Now it's a different ball game. And that's one of the reasons why I think uh, the longevity of staff has, has changed. So our first lot pulls out at 7.15, the horses are ridden out, they come back in, they get back in about eight o'clock. Um, they're then washed down, brushed down, and then they get on the second lot uh, and repeat the exercise. Yeah, all right, all good, all good. 
All oh, happy? It was, wasn't it? We could run from now on as well. We are just on our way to warm up in the school and have a walk around for second lot. You can focus your energy on that horse on the day. You feel like you're doing something, like you feel like you've got purpose because you're trying to make that horse better. You know, we all want the same thing, like we want the horses to, we want them to be happy and we want them to perform well on the racetrack. Leading horses up at the races is like, I, I look, like it's one of the best things you get to do working here. You see them all in their glad rags going racing, and you just think this is so worth it. You know, um, if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life, as they say. So yeah, we are really, really lucky. I'm just getting him ready now. It's not time to leave yet, so I'm just getting him placid. The, the, the staff are looking after a horse. The most important thing for them is that they love their animals, uh, and to see them run. Um, and they'd like to present them looking fantastically well at the race course. So they, a chance of winning a best turned out prize is always something that they aspire to. We're very lucky we win a huge number of them. Seeing the horses that I work with every day do well on the course, it's, it's, all, it's, a, it's an achievement sort of thing. It's very. It's very nice. Seeing the improvement, like the relationship that you build with them and seeing how well they do, like when they go out and you feel like you're in it together, sort of, yeah. Hi, my name's Lee. I'm the travelling head girl for Kim Bailey. Um, I am Platinum Does He Know Now. He gets quite excited at the races, so just keep him relaxed and so we don't have to do too much with him at the races. So I'm just going to bandage him up to travel, um, just in case he knocks himself in the lorry. Bandage all four legs up over the knees and the joints and his tail just to protect his legs while he's travelling. Okay, so we've got the hay for Martin Abbey. You've obviously got the sweeping brush and the scoop to clean it out after. We've got some chitneys. We've got the um, got the silks. And we've just got all the brushes and stuff and buckets for water. Oh. Right, we're all set and we're off to Cheltenham now. I was up at half four this morning to get ready. <laughs> and uh, what time is it now? It's now half eleven. And what time will you get back and you know leave the yard? Um, I'm not too sure. Normally we leave, but we finish at half five. So we've got a camera in the back of the lorry so we can see the horses, so you know that they're happy and comfortable. They're not distressed. Nothing bad is happening to them. Do they, do they mind going backwards? No, I think they travel really well backwards. We've always had backward facing ones, but we've never had a problem with doing it. And I think it's, generally speaking to people, a lot of people prefer it. For Scotland and things, we always carry water in the back and we'd stop at services maybe halfway and offer them a drink. And for really long journeys, if we're overnighting, they'll have a hay net. But for most journeys, they don't. So if you know one kicks, it'll kick every time, but that's just the way they are. And if, but if they're normally quiet and then they start kicking, you know something's wrong. So when we get there, we'll take him off of the, um, off the lorry and we'll take him into the stable, take off his bandages, give him some water, and then we'll go and wash him off. And we'll walk around for a bit to have like his legs stretched and then we'll start getting him ready to go into the truck. Hello, handsome. He's a really 
quiet the whole time just when he gets to panic gets a little bit excited and wants to go. How excited are you now? Quite excited, yeah. <laughs> Amazing to be involved with. Yeah. Carrots tonight? Oh yeah, definitely. You're actually quite emotional. He's <laughs> just such a nice horse. He's just, just loved by everyone at home. He's just, just so nice. One mustn't forget that these horses are really important to the people who look after them. They see them every single day, they work them every single day, and for them to see them perform on a race course successfully is one of the greatest moments. And watching a member of staff go past the winning post is seeing them cheering and yelling is, is, is something that we get pleasure out of. The fun of seeing your horse win is it's got to be the most exciting part of all. Well, the thoroughbred is, to me, one of the most beautiful animals you'll ever come across. I love watching horses move. I love seeing how majestic they are, where they actually walk and trot in front of you, especially at the sales. You go to the sales and you look at these untouched, un untutored animals by the fact that they've been um, led away by a human being. They haven't been ridden. And seeing them use themselves and see them actually make use of their own ability at that stage of their career, to me, is fantastic. And uh, you look at those horses and they dream, I dream, we all dream together. And uh, a crystal ball will take us six years down the road to find out some are very good and some are not very good, but um, that crystal ball is one of the reasons why we do it. It's, it's a very exciting time buying horses and looking at thoroughbreds. Uh, they're just, just a fantastic animal. You know, the horses that I do ride, I ride the first flow, who's, you know, very luckily won that grade one, uh, which is a very, very nice privilege. So just looking after, say, five horses, you can have such, a, such an impact on some very nice races with your little, your little string of horses, it's really nice. So I've just ridden my third lot, um, and I'm about to take Imperial Aura off the walker to be my fourth lot, if I can find him. I mean, he's so, he's so kind-natured. They've always been really good horses here. We've always seemed to have more quality than we have quantity. Like, for example, him when he went to the Betfair Chase, it's nice to have a grade one Saturday, Saturday runner. Been here for just nearly four years now, so yeah, must be, must be enjoying it. Put that in there, tell him. I didn't come from a racing background, and it, was, it took a long time to get to the point where I'd actually, you know, I felt like I could come into a racing yard, you know? But actually, like, I came here, I didn't really know that much. And then everyone was really supportive and taught me a lot. And now I get, I've ridden like most of the horses here, which has been really great. And I feel like a, a way better rider after like just seven months like being here. You know, I started out, I'd kind of ridden just like X races and stuff. So like, you know, the little odd thing, but I'd I didn't even, I didn't actually go to the colleges or anything. And they still were able to take me on. And, um, you know, here we are seven months later and I've ridden nearly all the horses and I really enjoy it, you know. I went to no the Northern Racing College in Doncaster. That's how I got this job, really. I've just fallen in love with the job and I've stuck at it ever since and I've been here for a year and a half now. It's hard work, but it's more like um, you have to really be into it and like it to be able to do it. Riding out in the morning, like seeing the sun come up, it's so beautiful. We have some views like from here, it's so beautiful. My favourite thing about working in racing is definitely the horses. You can form a bond with them and you get paid to look after and ride these top class national hunt horses. It's really a privilege. <laughs> he's, so, he's so funny. He's such a big personality, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's only a baby. <laughs> it is a job. It's more than a job. It's it's a way of life. It's um, it's a it's a it's a form of dedication to work with animals and look after animals. And we're very honoured and trusted and, and lucky to have animals to look after like we do. Horses' welfare is the most important thing that any trainer should really worry about because at the end of it, a we can't do it without horses. Secondly, they're, they're pampered um, and they're incredibly lucky to be here, as far as I'm concerned, incredibly lucky to be here. You know, they have, they have fantastic staff looking after them. They get the top quality feed, the top quality bedding. Um, they're treasured, they're treated with total respect uh, and totally loved. Um, and, you know, we pride ourselves in the fact that our horses would probably win more best turned out win awards than anybody else. We have a reputation for our horses looking fantastically well at the races. Um, and that means my staff work hard and they work hard to make sure themselves and the horses look well. Um, horses welfare is undoubtedly hugely, hugely important. After half 11 we start turning some of them out, so we turn out a select few when it's quite cold like this we don't turn out too many of them just so they get a bit of fresh air maybe if they're a bit fresher they get a bit of energy out as well. We have um, um, like from 12 till half three off and then we'll come back and um, then we'll just muck them out again and feed them all, put them to bed and then we'll start all over in the morning again. Evening stables, uh, we've just got sort of a few horses that have been turned out over lunchtime in the field um, and we shall, we've, once they're all in we should put the horse on the walk which I'm just about to do now with Queen of Hearts. Everything gets checked over so the legs are fine, everything's eaten up, everything's fine. Uh, rugs accordingly, so tonight they'll probably have four on because it's been quite cold so we want to keep them nice and warm. <laughs> they love being brushed, we brush them after we've ridden them then in the evening we'll brush all our own horses so they'll get like brushed two or three times a day. <laughs> You have to delegate, um, and that delegation is a really important part of my job. You know, I look after the owners, I go racing, um, and I've left here sometimes at nine o'clock in the morning um, with my staff running the entire day without me. Now, that's very important that you have staff who are capable of looking after you, and I have. I'm incredibly lucky that I have staff that have been with me for a fair length of time now, and, uh, you know, I know that I can trust them, and, and, and they can trust me, and they go away, and I go away, and everything's done as I want it to be done. To be fair, we're all like a family. If we go out, we all go out, and every so often we'll all make dinner together and we'll all sit around the table and just eat. And we spend all all our nights that we stay in just sat around the kitchen table, just chatting and having a laugh. It is not easy for new 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 people that haven't lived away from home, but. We're all a family, especially if you live in the hostel, we're all a family, we're all very nice. And it's nice to be in like a team of people that are so close with each other. And it's nice, like we're in the evening, we'll go out for food or we'll go to the pub together. And it's a nice, like, it's a nice little community in our little yard. I say like happy horses obviously do better. And it's very important that we keep them happy. So they're happy with like the same person looking after them because you clearly have a relationship with each of us, so, yeah. <laughs> You're a good girl. I'm very lucky. I train for some wonderful people. I really enjoy meeting people. I enjoy working with people. I love my sport. I love racing. I think it's important that we should realise that actually there is a huge career um, lift when you get involved in racing. It's not a sport that it should be looked upon as being an also ran department. It's not. It's one of the biggest entertainment sports in the country. We employ a huge number of people. And it's, it's something we need to address and make sure that people realise that there is a future in it. And we should be encouraging it.